Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick video um, going through the absurdities of NASA and how they depict space. I mean, it's getting really seriously silly and uh, I wanted to go through a couple articles for you and just uh, hopefully you're going to see it as crazy as I do, but uh, maybe you think I'm the crazy one. But anyways, let's just see. We'll go through the video and we'll find out who's the craziest when we get through it. But uh, anyways, we have NASA continually pumping out the articles, going every place in the universe, just absolute insanity. What's going on lately? Oh man, space, such a joke. It really is, it's laughable. I mean, sometimes the stuff they tell us and just the accomplishments they're making um, really help people to start to see kind of between the lines because really, come on, the moon was 240,000 miles away. And since then, the furthest that NASA has been is like 400 miles. Look this up yourself and see. I'm not even joking. It's space that's joking. I mean, it's NASA that are full of the jokes. So let's uh, let's continue to laugh. This might be uh, a video where you get some good laughs, and hopefully you do because sometimes you have to laugh at these things. Just because if you don't, you will end up in tears because it's just this tragic that this many people are believing the lies of what's being taught. I mean, really, NASA is a joke with their rockets and just everything that they teach, and it's time to. Yeah, it's time to expose them for what they are. I mean, if this doesn't open your eyes, I don't know what will. Because there's a few things that, you know, maybe you believe, you know, and possibly they've gone here or there. But, I mean, remember 2015? 2015 was the big year where, wow, they were going to be going to Mars. I mean, there was all this propaganda, Hollywood. You had the Martian. There was just this ramp up. We're going to Mars. We're going to Mars. Oh, and then you had all these discoveries. Remember with their little fake rover on Mars? We've discovered water on Mars. Yes, we have. We, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've discovered water on Mars. I mean, we heard that like, I don't know, over 10 times. It would be like brand new breaking announcement. NASA has everyone prepare Monday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to announce this great new announcement. And you'd wait. What would it be? Oh, it was water on Mars. Constantly, we found water on Mars, water on Mars. They are so infatuated with finding life, it's not even funny. And again, this perpetuates the entire lie about life on other planets. We're, we're uh, not alone. There's billions and trillions of lives out there. And, you know, and this is where it gets into the entire deception and where they're leading us. And I think this should really open people's eyes because I'll tell you, 2015 was hyping up Mars, Mars. But guess what? Guess what? The announcement is they're finally going. Okay, they're going to be going to Mars. Not to the moon. No, no, we've already been there, they say. Now, we'll get into that a little bit more because Mars, you know, is very intriguing because, you know, with our modern technology, you know, we can't really see what's going on there. I mean, we've our technology's caught up to the moon. Therefore, you know, we can see what's happening if they decided to go back to the moon. The reality is they've never been to the moon. If you're going to actually try to convince me that in 1960s technology, they actually went 240,000 miles successfully six times, they're back 12 times through the Van Allen radiation belts. Come on, think about it. We'd have a moon base, we'd have hotels, we'd have travel there. And constantly you see Richard Branson, you see SpaceX, and they're talking about bringing tourists to the moon. You know what? It's never going to happen. So just be prepared when you hear people say that uh, it's going to happen and they're going to be going to the moon. And they're not. They're not. They never have been. Now they're moving off into more absurd places. And we're going to cover a few today in this video. First off, let's find out when they're going to Mars. Oh, Congress passes NASA funding bill, Mars mission. The date has been set. All right. This one's from uh, RT, and their slogan is question more. So we're going to question more today uh, with NASA and their nonsense. All right. Let's go into this a little bit. A trip to Mars by 2033 is among the several long-term NASA goals included in a bill Congress just passed to fund the Aerospace Agency. All right. First of all, we've got 33. They just love that number, don't they? 33, 33. If you know anything about Masons and 33 degree Masonry and just that number, that should just, uh, you know, the red flag should be going off already. But stop and think about this. 2033. Like, they're not really wasting any time, are they? It's not like they're going in a few years or a couple years. I mean, how old are you going to be? 
when they supposedly are going to go to Mars in 2033. I mean, think about it. Seriously. What's going to happen, though, by 2030, 2028? Oh, they'll announce some new thing and we're going somewhere else or we're not going or we're postponing it. It's not going to happen. You're not going to see this in your lifetime. Mark my words. You're not going to see them going back to the moon because they never have been to the moon. But this is just nonsense. I mean, read this yourself. Go to the article. Read it. I'll post the links in the description just so you can see how absurd this really is. But again, they're planning a trip to Mars in 2033. Oh, wow. So, and, and I mean, part of this whole thing is as long as they go to more absurd places, you know, oh, Pluto, and we're going to go beyond our galaxy, then really the moon doesn't seem so hard to achieve, does it? I mean, the moon, it's the moon. It's easy to get to. I mean, we're going to Mars now. We're going off to Pluto and we have rovers and all these things. things. So people start thinking about this and the moon just seems so easy. It's like, why would they go there? It's like, it's a piece of cake. Is it really a piece of cake? You know, what I don't understand is with all these feminists and women rights activists and, you know, having all their little marches, why aren't they marching right up to NASA, right up here, you know, right up here, right by this, you know, fake little rocket head. But anyways, they're around this building and they're demanding the first woman to walk on the moon. You would think in 2017, there'd be women that would really want, you know, to just say, yep, the first woman walked on the moon, but yet nothing, hush, nothing at all. Nothing happens, right? But again, there's just so many absurdities. And what do you hear from most people? Well, they don't need to go back to the moon because they've already been there. The reality is though, they tell us the moon is 240,000 miles away. And yet the furthest that NASA or any space agency has been, man-made craft has been, is like 400 miles. It's a fraction of a fraction of a percent. So anyways, that, that's, this is silly. Read the article yourself. Mars, not happening. And even if it is, even if they're going to deceive the public, they've got quite a while to deceive the public going to 2033. And again, red flags should go off with the number 33. Interesting they would pick that date. Uh, but anyways, the fact is it's not going to happen. They'll postpone it and we'll continue on. But more absurd than Mars. And, and again, if people don't start waking up to these lies, I mean, I don't know if there's any hope. But seriously, where is NASA going to go? Actually, next year they're planning. That's right. Everyone, guess where they're going next? Not joking. Yeah, that's right. The sun. <laughs> Are you kidding me? NASA Solar Probe plus spacecraft to fly to the sun. Humans have sent spacecraft to the moon. No, they actually haven't. Mars. No, they haven't at all. And even distant interstellar space. But could we spend a spaceship to the scorching sun? The answer is yes, and it's happening soon. This article is from CBS News. You can look this one up yourself. Uh, many, many uh, agencies covered this article. Um, but yeah, they're basically sending a probe. They're saying the heat's kind of an issue. So they've got this real protective stuff going on. They can't go through the Van Allen radiation belts, but yet they're going to be sending this thing through uh, that's going to withstand temperatures. The surface of the sun is only about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's only about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. But yeah, we got this technology. We're going to be able to go in there. Now, there's, I think they're going within like, I don't know, 400 miles from the sun. It's, they say it's 93 million miles away. And yet it's going, let's see where it is here. I'm sure they talk about it. Right here. They're going to within 4 million miles of the sun. So that's out of 93 million miles. So that's pretty close, right? Now, what have we been taught? Ozone layer, oh, it's dangerous. Put your sunscreen on. You know, if we were even closer to the sun by a few degrees, we'd fry. If we were away from it, we'd freeze. And yet now they're going to be sending their little, you know, magical spaceship or probe or whatever within 4 million miles of the sun, which 93 million miles away is actually fairly close. The thing you couldn't even get remotely close to the sun based on these temperatures. Yet they want us to believe that by next year, that's right, not, not in 2087, not in you know 2140, we're going to the sun. No, 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 they're going to be going next year. In 2018, NASA plans to launch the Solar Pro Plus mission to the sun. Really? To the sun. 
Uh -huh. So there you go, taxpayer dollars. All that money is going towards a piece of junk that will basically fry up. But the fact is it won't even fry because they won't even build it. They'll send us CGI, fake pictures back, and then look, ooh, look at us. We're 10 million miles away. They all have no camera. I mean, how do you have a camera on a craft to withstand that type of heat based on the temperature they're giving us? It would just fry. It would melt. I mean, Nikon, any cameras wouldn't even withstand that. I mean, we could get into the satellites and all their, even the actual temperatures they tell us uh in space and the thermosphere and just getting into all the different ones the stratosphere and <laughs> atmosphere but when you're getting into the thermosphere you're getting crazy now they're talking about going to the sun good luck on that nasa thanks for you know totally i mean it's like they're throwing stuff out where they're just like people are such idiots they'll believe anything we do we could put out an announcement every day and say that you know we're going anywhere and people are just going to believe this we're just going to buy this it's such a deceitful organization and i'm not saying everyone at nasa is evil or they're in on it i'm talking about the upper echelon study the roots of nasa watch my documentary scientism exposed it touches on that there's a lot of great material on the beginnings, the occult, the nature of NASA, um, if you start getting into it and you see the deception and you see what they're actually trying to do in destroying the credibility of creation, of God's uh, truth, all these sort of things is nothing but lies and, you know, celebrate truth. You know, I, I created the channel about a year and a half ago, and that really is the mission is expose the world's lies and celebrate the truth. Jesus Christ, you know, John 14, 6, and really the whole pursuit of truth, and this is what we're about. But again, we have NASA Solar Pro Plus spacecraft to fly to the sun, and yet we have these articles on, and you know, millions of comments, and all these people like applaud and think it's wonderful. But then you get more ridiculous stuff like this, TRAPPIST-1 system. Now, you got to see this to believe this, because it's absolutely insane. We got the Huffington Post here. And they're talking about TRAPPIST-1, NASA reveals first glimpse of recently discovered star system that could host life. Now, they got all these announcements lately about, you know, discovering life and all these planets that can, you know, and it's just insane. And again, you have to ask yourself, what kind of lens do they have to even see this stuff? And we see all these pictures and renderings. And the thing is, they're not pictures, yet people believe that we actually have technology to see like four light years away and trillions of miles. And do you understand how far one light year is look it up i'm not even going to say it because it's so absurd one light year they're talking insane distances here and yet we just gobble this up we believe this and it's insane but anyways you get into this and it's just absolutely stupid but in february nasha shook the astronomical community by announcing the discovery of seven earth-sized planets orbiting a nearby star. Interesting that it's seven Earth-sized planets orbiting a nearby star. What have we been told about stars? All the stars you see, they're suns, right? We get back into the heliocentrism, everything is suns, you know, and again, we've gone through that quite a bit on my channel. If you're interested more on getting into what are stars, look up my video about the stars, and uh, we'll get into that a little deeper. But remarkably, three of those planets orbit within the so-called habitable zone okay they've deemed this area habitable meaning they could harbor water and life now the agency has revealed a first glimpse of the extra of sorry extraordinary trappist one system and well it's pretty pixelated but there's a good reason for that all right so they actually make an announcement you know, and I think it's something like 10 trillion years away or 10 trillion light years. I forget what it is. It's really far. It's like, uh, and they'll probably talk about it. But anyways, are you ready for the picture? And you got to see this because it's nuts. All right, here we go. Wee. Are you kidding me? That's what they release. This is what they release. There you go. How you like that? Ooh, look at that. Isn't that just amazing? And it's almost like maybe they're trying to convince us because it's so far away. In the in the galaxies of galaxies or whatever that you know this is our technology right now you know maybe in 30 40 50 years our technology will catch up and these things will you know not be so pixelated and i think this is all really another part of the deception is now they're getting to a point where we're exposing a lot of this stuff so they're saying hey guys look okay they're sitting around this little nasa you know high level table and saying okay they got a point here we don't have a lens to see a trillion miles heck we don't even have a lens to see even a thousand miles away but hey you know, people have been believing this for a while. People are starting to expose it. Technology is catching up. People are starting to do the math. They're starting to do the research. Let's come out with this kind of stuff because it's more believable. It's like we discovered something and let's find out exactly how far away this is. Just so I'm right on this. But I think 40 light years from Earth. 
40 light years from Earth. Now, I'm not sure, maybe correct me in the comments or whatever, but I think one light year is like a trillion miles, something like that. So let's just say, and let's just do the math, let's just make easy math. Let's just say it's 25 trillion miles away. Trillion with a T, not million, not billion, trillion. And yet we're going to believe even this, even this pixelated crap that they put on here. Come on, people, seriously, start thinking. Hopefully you already are. You're already helping to expose the lies of NASA. They're taking billions of dollars, taxpayer dollars. And honestly, it's not just the theft that they're doing and getting away with it. It's also the massive deception and the people that are actually literally walking away from the truth of the word of God. Because they've, tell, they've told us the Bible is a joke. I mean, it's even in their mission statement. If you go into the missions of NASA and you go into what they're about, they're about, honestly, the linking of scientism and to be put together to basically show the meaning of life, where we came from, answer all the questions that the Bible says. But yet, hey, that's a book. You know, hey, that was just written by a bunch of men. Let's not believe that. Let's believe an agency that basically started off by doing chants and witchcraft and the occult. Let's get a bunch of Nazi scientists together. You know, no one has a problem with Nazis. Do they? Well, yeah, they do. Would they have an issue with the fact that most of NASA was started by the Nazi scientists? Look it up. Operation Paperclip. These are the type of things that people just don't want to believe because they're just so in love with space. Oh, I love Star Wars. I don't want to give up Star Wars. I like Chewbacca. I like Luke Skywalker. He's my favorite. Come on, people, you need to like let go of Star Wars, you know, and if you're a Trekkie, it's all good. You know, I like Star Wars. I like, you know, I like Star Trek, too. But seriously, ooh, but Spock, he's so cool. He does the Vulcan thing. Let, let it go. Let it go. You know, it's OK. You can enjoy those shows as science fiction is what they are. The fact of the matter is none of it is based on reality. It's all to perpetuate this understanding that maybe someday a thousand years, 10,000 years, million years, whenever in our quote unquote evolution, we will evolve to a point where we can explore the galaxy. And again, it's all part of this evolutionary lie, space, all these type of things that we're evolving, that our technology is getting very, you know, superior to other, you know, ancient life forms. Therefore, you know, looking at all, into the past, looking into people before, we're much smarter. Therefore, you know, we know more than they do. And again, that's a huge lie. It's a massive lie. And then they put out crap like this. But really, this is telling because you can laugh at this pixelated Trappist one star system, you know, thing they put out. But really, what they're trying to do now is trying to make it more real in a weird way. It's not like they're improving the CGI and making things even more graphic. They're saying, look, it's like in the 1960s, we had black and white. We didn't have, you know, color. So it's like, you know, in 50 years, will people look back on this image and going, yeah, but in 2017, their technology wasn't that good. I mean, they just, the internet, it was really kind of going full steam, but, you know, VR came in and AR and d different technologies and, you know, our technology improved. So therefore we could see Trappist one, but really I look at it as laughable, but also it's serious in the sense that, this is what this is about. It is about perpetuating a lie with our evolution, with where we are with our technology. It's bad enough they show us star systems or they show us galaxies that are, you know, four, five, six light years away. That's insane. There is no camera. This magical Hubble telescope that shows us all these wonderful things throughout the universe, never do they turn it around and show us our own Earth. There is not even one video anywhere in existence, you know, that's live, whatever of the spinning of the earth, HD video, you know, at all, zero. I mean, there's no cameras that point upwards, going out into the atmosphere, out into space. All of these things just start asking the questions because seriously, NASA is just running the biggest joke. And again, so many people just believe everything. Oh, but they couldn't lie to us. Oh no, they couldn't lie to us. Well, first of all, if you don't understand anything about DOD or military or any of these type of things, they're sworn to secrecy. Anything they do, uh, even if they were doing something, um, you know, that was uh, satanic or that was devious or that was just lying to the American public or to the world for that matter, they would be held to this is good for mankind. This is, you know, uh, top secret or, you know, these type of things. So start using your head and stuff and thinking that, wait a minute, I'm going to rest all my faith. I'm going to put all my trust in one agency like NASA and then start thinking that other space agencies couldn't be involved in it. I mean, understand that this is a lot bigger than just a bunch of men. Men haven't even devised this. This is spiritual. This is something behind the scenes that is working. I mean, it's very clear in the Bible. 
Satan is the God of this world, and he has given power, and he's given authority and dominion, and he's given the riches and the kingdoms of all the worlds to those that bow down and serve him. And just like Jesus had his 12 disciples, I personally believe that Satan had his 12 disciples himself. They're the 12 bloodline families. Look this up, and you've got very powerful families that run this world. They're higher than governments. They're higher than presidents. And again, when you start doing the research, start digging and really thirst for the truth because you will find it. But I'll tell you one thing, sometimes it's hard to get rid of our worldview. It's something that we were taught from a very early age. But seriously, let's just conclude this video by saying, come on, seriously, a trip to Mars in 2033, you know, um, it's been 50 years. They've never been back to the moon almost. I mean, it's been, what, 44 years, you know, come on. Think about it logically. I mean, why isn't China on the moon or Russia or whatever? You got to think bigger than this. You got to think rather than, oh, you know, like Obama said, you know, when he was asked, are we going to go back to the moon? He's like, uh, 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 we don't need to go to the moon because uh, uh, we've already been there. I mean, these are silly responses and you need to use your brain. Wake up to the truth. And seriously, if you really believe that NASA is going to the sun, or within, you know, 4 million miles of the sun, when it's 93 million miles away, we're taught. All of this stuff is nonsense. It's lies. Hopefully in the pages of history, it's taught that uh, many, many people were coming against this to reveal the truth that none of this stuff is real. It's just a bunch. It's just a joke. It really is. It's really sad. Hopefully what people will continue to do the research, wake up. And anyways, I just hope I really hope and I pray that, uh, you know, everything happens and that things continue on, that people really, really will seek the truth, honestly. And I don't know where you're at. I don't know, you know, where, how you're coming to this video. You might think it's absolutely insane, but really what's insane is seriously flying to the sun. I mean, think about that, for example. And again, really, how come they haven't been to the moon? It's almost been 50 years. I mean, look into the moon landing, look into that Apollo, just look into it. And honestly, really just have an open mind, start thinking of these things. Because here's the question. If they haven't been to the moon, where have they been? Where can they go? Definitely not to the sun. And they're not going there ever. Nor are they going to any of the lights in the sky. They weren't meant to be driving rovers. They weren't meant to be playing golf on. God created them as lights in the sky, and that's exactly what they are. We'll continue to search for the truth. Keep exposing the lies. Celebrate truth. Take care.